My sword, Sully. Come on. You remember my sword. It's scary, though. <laughs> like I, don't, you remember, don't you remember when George whipped out his sword last time on camera? Yeah, like I unsheathed it and I kept poking the end. And I yeah. was like, this is actually quite sharp, but it's not like sharp, sharp. It's like blunt sharp. Do you know why what I mean? You, Just to reiterate, this is an actual penis. sword, not his penis. <laughs> what the fuck, Luke? Hello and welcome to the Slapduck Podcast. I'm your host, Sully Iqbal, a.k.a. Mr. You'll Never Walk Alone. And I'm joined <laughs> by, in the red room... Uh, Mr. George Gessy, <laughs> a.k.a. Uh, Goku's Bicep Vein. <laughs> and in the white room, I'm joined by... Luca, Luca a.k.a. George's Sword Penis. <laughs> okay, well that seems like an inappropriate way to start this episode. You listen to the end to hear the story behind that. <laughs> wow. You actually committed wow. to that as well. Wow. Like, yep. that's, that's on the show right now. That, wow. That is, we. Wow. I'm now known as the sword um, penis. Well, you can find us everywhere. You can find good podcasts, including iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher Ra- Radio. Oh, oh. Uh, and you can also find us on Radio Haver at 6, radiohaver.com at 6 p.m. British time every yeah. Tuesday. You can also find us on slapduck.com. Yeah. And all of our social Woo! channels. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. of the social channels. Yeah. Bitch. Whoa. Uh, so today's episode is going to be a little bit more chillaxed. A little bit, yeah. In the last couple of weeks, you know? Yeah. Um, Hopefully it's funny this week. Ah, we always find Whoa. <laughs> you're, you're part of this team. No, funny I am quite the same, but we got serious for a few weeks on the track. Yeah, true. Well, Very last true. week was funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Funny with no brim. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so, ha, ha, we're just going to talk about how we're doing. So, uh, how are you guys? How Do you want you guys want to kick it off, see who wants to, who wants to go? Why, who are you pointing to, Luca? Yeah. The, the camera, my, but George. On my screen, you're pointing to me. What, yeah, I'm, on my screen, he's pointing to me. So who exactly. Do you, who do you want to start, bro? George, you can start. Okay. Is it because you haven't had a life? <laughs> Fuck. Yo. All these yeah, pretty much, man. <laughs> Damn. Well, uh, how have I been? Are we talking like accumulatively or over like the past um, week or so? Uh, let's say the past week. Then we can we can delve deeper. Okay. Um, over the last week, how have I been? I've been mostly okay, I think. I think that's probably a good way to start. I've been mostly all right. I've, um, I've had like a small issue with... Because I, I, like all of us in this room, uh, I mean this chat room, mm. uh, we're all creative, right? We're all creative people. And for the past week... Like for me anyway, it felt really, really difficult to find that kind of creative buzz. And it was super annoying. Like mm. this, I mean, sorry, my my blind is being sucked out of my window right now. <laughs> it's very <laughs> distracting. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly shut that while having my microphone here. But um, oh, damn. Yeah. He's moving. He's on the move. I'm on the move. So essentially my I felt really kind of blocked creatively. And I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um base oh so bad with words. I was basically coming on the podcast today to kind of talk to you guys about how to how to kickstart that kind of creative thinking and creative process again. Cause yeah. yeah. I was doing like video editing and like um, trying to spruce up some stuff for work and Mm -hmm. everything I did, I was like, this looks bad. This looks so bad. Like, yeah, I thought I was good at this shit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just, you know, it's just been one of those weeks where I've been like creatively spent and I need to try and kickstart that back up for next week. Mm -hmm. Mm. And, you know, I guess my when I throw this question to you is how have you guys dealt with uh, losing your creative uh, drive slash bubble Mm -hmm. and how have you managed to regain it? You know? Uh, Oddly enough, I kind of had the same sort of thing this week. Um, 
started trying to like get back into writing some music as soon as I've got a bit of time on my hands. So it was the sort of thing that was like, I had a bunch of ideas and it's kind of like, cool, this would be great. And everything I did, I hated. Mm. <laughs> and it, it was that thing was like, I, I guess we all go through periods like this when you're doing any sort of thing creative where you either haven't done it for a while or you're just not feeling it and everything you do just feels like a bit of a grind, a bit of a slog. Um, yeah. And you're not really sure how to get out of it. And I don't know, I think one of the things I've always done to try and get out of it is literally walk away from it. It's not great when it's work because you've got to do it, but if it's something yeah. that you're doing separately to it, it's like, just walk away from it. Do something that has nothing to do with it. Like if it's go, go bake, go for a hike, just do anything that isn't to do with the thing that you're struggling to kind of do and mm. come at it with a pair of like fresh ears or eyes, whether it's like a few hours later or a day later or even a week later, depends on just kind of what gets you there. I don't think there's mm. any, it's a bit like writer's block in that yeah. sense it's kind of like yeah which i mean shit i i've had writer's block before where i'm trying to like i got an idea and i know what i want to get out i just can't get it out and i just be tossing and turning it'll be the sort of thing that I, I can't sleep because it's just there and i don't know how to get it out and one day i'd be in the shower singing along to a song i'd be like that's it that'll be it yeah boom yeah. and it's just that sort of thing that you kind of you can't really force it otherwise it just gets worse yeah, true. Uh, which is like the worst kind of advice that I can give you, especially because it's something that you've got to do for work, so you have to do it. It's not something that you're, you're getting to choose when you want to do it, and it's something you like know, a hobby or spare time. Yeah, no, I I, I know what you mean because, like, um, for example, I was you know I was on a call at work, and it was discussing a, a potential project that might come up, mm-hmm. and. I was I was getting so excited for it. I was like, "Oh man, I get to digitally illustrate stuff for work and da, 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 all this sort of stuff." Yeah. And I was oh. getting like really fired up about it. And the the only like annoying thing is I don't know whether or not it's actually going to come down the pipeline. But yeah. it's just like you know, when you're in talks with clients and it might work or it yeah, might not, depending on budget mm. and scope and all this sort of stuff. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm kind of holding out for that. I feel like that would be my my launch back into being creative because I get to think yeah. creatively for it. Yeah. But I was kind of like, I don't know. I spent this morning and no, yeah, it was m- mostly this morning just listening to music and um, just drawing stuff on my iPad. Mm. I was like, just trying to like draw a, a character, you know, non-specific, just can, yeah. w- what can I do? You know, can yeah. I start with a weird shape or da 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 but you know, I also I don't know. Should I say this? I'm going to say it anyway. Why not? Who would do it? I've been. I've got like a diary, right? Damn. Okay. I've got a weird diary, and when I say a weird diary, it's, it's a sexy diary. It's like a Google Doc. <laughs> huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a Google Doc, and I fill it in something like every two or three months. Okay. It's more of more of like a retrospective kind of thing, okay. and it, yeah. it all kicked off when I went through a bad spell, like a couple of years ago. It might have been a year ago. I I, I was with you guys. I probably told you all about it. <clears throat> went through a weird spell, and since then, like every a couple of months, I retrospectively add like, oh, you know, this is something that made you feel bad, or this is something that you've dealt with or you know don't forget who you are this is the kind of things you like to do all this sort of stuff just you know trying Mm. to build myself back up from being sad yeah and i'm not sad anymore uh Mm -hmm. thankfully and it's been a great help so i was kind of like filling that in and it allowed me to kind of like evaluate where i am right now and Mm. i wrote that part down about the whole creative stuff along with you know a whole host of other stuff which i think is a good good shout so maybe i need to be a bit more pardon me a bit more retrospective and looking at my art and my creative processes i'm then evaluating them now and how can i move forward with them now maybe yeah, that's what i have to do bad thing. i think i think we all need to be i think everyone has to kind of be like be able to look back at their stuff with like mm. a fresh 
mm. set of eyes. I'm like, okay, where am I? Both like creative stuff and just their person, their personal life, etc. Mm, yeah. Um, I mean that kind of touches on like, obviously we're talking about like creative blocks and stuff. Mm. Um, sort of similar to that is like if you're doing something and you're starting to struggle, I always find like stopping at a point where it's easy to get back into it. So mm. like, I don't know, I, I can't attest to like writing or make, oh, sorry, to drawing or making music, but like if it were writing, I'd be like, okay, I'm struggling now. I'm going to get up until this point and then the next part's super easy. So tomorrow, if I want to get back into it, I I know I can start Yeah, um, from that. That's a good um, shout. Just like kind of giving yourself like a, a point that you can jump straight into it to get those creative juices yeah. flowing on a fresh occasion that hopefully mm-hmm. can like lead into making other things yeah. easier. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I mean, personally, I, I, I mean, I always go through, very regularly go through phases. Where I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm shit at writing. I shouldn't do it. I'm mm. crap. And then sort of things that get me going are if I'll, I, and it's never intentional, but I'll watch something on my, you know what? That's amazing. I wanna, I wanna get back into writing. So for me, it was I watched five episodes of Rick and Morty, <laughs> like back yeah. to back last week, and like, you know what? This is awesome writing. Let me see what I can do. Or I watched a Bollywood film that I'd not watched in like four, like three or four years. I'm like, you know what? That's got parallels to something that I was planning on writing. Let's go off and write it. Mm. Mm. Nice. So, yeah, I think sometimes just watching or listening to or looking at a piece of art that is that inspires you it's a really great way to just get everything going mm. that's, yeah it's mm. a good shout because i i feel so, like i've like neglected a lot of um creative stuff since lockdown mm. started mm. even since before then i think like i i let things kind of it's easy to fall into that routine of Oh, I I do this for a job, so I don't really need to work at it because I'm yeah. working at it every day. But there comes a point. Well, for me anyway, I found a point where I've kind of plateaued at a specific mm. like point, and I'm yeah. like, why am I? Why am I stuck here? I need to. I've I, you know I've been here for too long. I need to go up now. Yeah, yeah. I need to level up my creative process and my, you yeah. know, mm. I need to be a bit more obsessed with it. As because it's kind of fell to the wayside a little bit. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I get that. It's like, I I don't know. I so uh, weird tangent, but like something that's to do with all this is like I think creative people tend to be the hardest critics to themselves for the most part. Like no no matter mm-hmm. no matter what someone says, like someone can call your work shit, and you're like, yeah, I know it's shit. I I think it's shit, and it's like, yeah, everyone's looking for that kind of. Um, little bit of recognition of someone to say like it's actually good an outsider's opinion but a few weeks ago at this point i don't know if i actually brought it up but um i was clearing out some stuff and i found all my old a level arts all of it I had oh it yeah yeah and uh fucking hell is it bad like it? i i thought it was utter dog shit i was going through it with my mum and there was, she was going through it was like actually the bunch of this stuff's really good and i was kind of like this is all fucking awful Trash. yeah I, I threw it all away <laughs> Like every single piece that I throw away because it's just no. I, yeah, I, did I you went, take photos? No. Um. So I went. Uh-oh. I went. I went oh, through it like legit. piece by piece and kind of like page by page and kind of like started like dismantling it because it was like stuck with a bunch of blue text. I wanted to take it off so I could put it in a recycling bin and all that kind of stuff. Um. So like going through it piece by piece and I was like, there was a couple of bits that I didn't mind. There was a couple of bits that I thought were okay, but I could do better now. Mm-hmm. Um. Weirdly though, it was the sort of thing kind of like. At the time, I thought this was all really good, and I thought this is the best yeah. stuff. This was the best stuff I'd ever done up until that point. And looking back at it now, which was I don't know five, six, seven years later, I'm looking back at it like this is dog shit. I could do so much better now. And it's like it's just showing how far I'd, I'd come from that kind of A level side of it. Yeah. Like shit, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't bad. I got a, a, I think I got an A A level, so it's like it's obviously it wasn't shit work or B. Yeah, I mean, A or B, one of them. Um. So it wasn't like shit at the time, but it was that sort of thing. That was like me looking back at it, I just thought, "Oh god, this is really fucking awful." Mm. Mm. So it was kind of like nice seeing, like, okay, cool, 
if I'd started doing stuff now and got back into it, I could definitely do better than that because yeah. <laughs> you've got better over the years at everything you're doing. So sometimes it's just nice to go back and like shit. Even my um my dissertation thing where I wrote a essentially a radio play. If I go back and listen to that now, I fucking hate it because I can hear <laughs> oh, every issue with it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like how I how I would write it now would be so much different. It'd be like it would flow so much better. How I would direct it would have been so much better because I had to direct yeah. the thing at the time. Um, mm -hmm. so it's nice, kind of like almost taking a beat and realizing how far you've come. Like you might hate what you're doing at the moment, but you go back and look at it, look at the stuff that you've done before. You're like, actually, what I'm doing now isn't that bad <laughs> in comparison yeah. to what I was doing. And it's how far I've come. So that's yeah, that's quite a true. nice way of that evaluation is very very beneficial. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's like of of anything, whether it's creative or just kind of in, like even even if it's sort of things kind of like ah, I'm I'm not as fit as I think I am, and then you think back, you're like, oh shit, I couldn't run to a fucking tree before. Yeah. I'm nowhere near as bad as I'm thinking. So like, at, mm. at any point of life, you just kind of look back and see how far you've come from. Then you're probably better than you think you are, yeah. and you've come a lot further than you were before. But you just kind of don't realize it, and I don't realize it. I have to constantly look back and be like, ah. That song sucks think, in comparison to stuff like that. I think creative mm. people are always, like, all the time, striving to get to that next level, even unconsciously, probably, which is why we always think our stuff is shit. Because yeah. we're like... But that's... Oh, sorry, that's the it, weird part. It's like, there is no level. It's not like one yeah. day you're going to wake up and be like, ta-da, you got the medal, you're at stage yeah. four. It's like, like, it's just a constant thing. You won't yeah. ever know that you've got to the next level until you look back and be like, oh, I'm better than that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I... I just an idea I thought of now would be a good way I think to stay creative and stuff is to also maybe have like a um like a mentor type figure mm. like it, someone who no you don't need to aspire to be like them but someone who knows what you do really well and maybe has experience in it and it could be someone who 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 from a third party evaluate you be like you know what, this X piece of art you've done, looking at this other piece of work, work you've did, it's a big improvement. Mm. Here are some things that maybe you could do next time to make it even better. Um, and that's a good way to keep you on your toes with yeah. creating, because sometimes you kind of, you kind of like, but what am, I'm just doing the same thing. What can I yeah. change up? I mean... It's sometimes it's difficult to find that. Like, I used to have that person when I was in film school. I don't really have that person now. Mm. I, there's someone I've got in mind, but like, that's a good way of maybe ha having some help keeping yourself accountable mm -hmm. with your creativity. That's not a bad idea. Some, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to just be like, it's hard to keep yourself accountable in all aspects of life. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Big time. And I honestly think it's it's fine every now and then to just be like, you know what, really not feeling it at the moment and just yeah. le leaving it be, try not to get too annoyed at the fact that you're not feeling it and then come back to it later and you're like, boom, here I'm back in the game. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 Very true. So yeah, there's, that has been my, my week so far. Mm -hmm. So it's been uh, a bit of a mix. Although on the, on a good side, um, I started running since i think it was just after may the 18th i think and okay. i'm my my goal was i'm gonna run around this this block where i live i'm gonna run around the block mm. and without stopping that's what i want to get mm. to and slowly but surely i'm i'm so close now i feel like lit because i run i run tuesday thursday Sunday. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. So I run three times a week with a two two day break from mm. Thursday to wait, no. Sunday. To Sunday. Is that right? I yes. So. yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, because you mentioned before, like when we were recording on a Sunday that you just come for a run. Yeah. Yes, correct. And um I feel like tomorrow, because obviously we're recording on Saturday today. Mm. Tomorrow, I feel like will be the 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 one. I feel like tomorrow is yeah. the one because before I was like, oh, I'm gonna run to this petrol station, and mm. da -da -da. I was like, oh, and I made it. I was like, oh, great. And my my slow relaxed walk 
where I wasn't running was like shorter. And I'm like, oh, that, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so close now. I'm getting there. And as soon as I complete it, I'm like, good shit. Now I can move on to, you know, a, a different project, like mm, something because, yeah. you know. It'd be that Rocky moment that you'll get to it, but like, yeah, but like, Did also super literally, like, yeah, yeah! Kind of I legit will. You have yeah. no idea. So I'm excited there for that. That's, Dude, it's I good remember to be the, excited by running. It's I remember nice. the first time I started going back in, like, I, I even remotely started doing any fitness stuff. This was like, I think I've spoken about it before. Um, like first kind of summer break in university, like between year yeah. one and two. Mm. And I remember going for a run. I was kind of yeah, fuck, I, I could probably run around this. And I, I got from where I started to the nearest tree, which was probably about twenty meters, and I was flat out of breath, just hunched over. It took so long to recover. I felt so shit, and it was like that sort of thing. Was like I eventually set myself a goal, like I'm gonna do one lap of this thing, whether it kills me. And it was like, yeah, it took me ages to actually get there because holy crap, was I unfit. But mm-hmm. when you get there, you're like, shit, I could actually do this. And you, it, that's like that's such a a very obvious. Like you're going further and further each time, you're getting better and yeah. better each time. It's like mm. it's a really nice kind of you can see mm. the improvement every time. Yeah, man, yeah. Mm. it's very. It feels good. It feels really good. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What about you, Luca? How have you been? Yeah, it's been a been a weird week for me. Um, <gasps> so, like over the past couple weeks, um, we've been doing the the garden up. Essentially, we had a big decking out there um so last week i tore all that up and started pulling up all the um kind of laid tiles that were underneath the decking from the previous owner of the house these like old shitty tiles took forever to do that got to take a sledgehammer to a bunch of concrete which was nice really cathartic because jesus christ i needed to do that for some reason um and then I found out underneath those that they should t- they are tiled over the previous garden. So I had to put up like three layers worth of old gardens going back like oh my god, so many years. Um, when I start, like when I cleared all those out, it's like great. So I dig around moving the soil so we could actually lay it down onto it. And I found what I thought was a, a grave, which was weird. Oh, um, it was like okay. this. Honestly, it was like I don't know, um, two and a half foot by one foot wide concrete structure underneath that was like. It was a good like two like two foot below the surface because I had, that's how oh. low I had to go down, and I was like crap. So I, I started like putting all the soil out of it, and there was this massive rug. I'm sh- I shit you not, like, it's like rolled up rug. I was like, oh my god, I've just found a dead body. We're gonna have to call the police. They're gonna have to dig up the garden. Oh my god, pulled out this rug, unrolled it. It's just a bunch of trash inside of it. This person rolled a bunch of trash, buried it in their garden, tiled over it. Like, like wow. actual rubbish. Like actual oh. rubbish, yeah. Just like bits of plastic bags and stuff. It's like, okay, either this body is super decomposed to the point of like no bones ever, or someone really didn't want to go to the skip one day. <laughs> but like, honestly, wow. for, a, for a good like 10 minutes, I was like, fuck, I found a dead body. And I looked at my dad and he was kind of like, we found a dead body, haven't we? He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's, it also, it wasn't that big a thing. It's like, we found a kid's dead body. This is going to get super dark. Oh, like, We were like really fucking worried. But thankfully, thankfully, it was just someone's old shit. I couldn't destroy this concrete structure because it was so big. So like, we just, thankfully, it was low down enough that we could just fill it up with actual soil but, this time. Yeah. Wow. Was it like, was it a nice rug? No, it was falling apart. It was like rubber bits in it. It essentially looked like the kind of like a like an eighties bath mat. Oh, <laughs> it was really bad. Um, <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, super weird. Um, but yeah, once we've done that, like, we've like tiled through the garden and stuff. Like it's all complete now. It actually looks nice. It's kind of like finished this kind of big project that was meant to be doing for a while. Because like, mm. why not? We could do it during lockdown yeah. because I can't do anything else now I don't have anything else to do on that side of it which is kind of annoying it was also because it was so physical and because the gyms are closed that was like training for me it was like cool I get to destroy concrete with a sledgehammer for an hour and a half which oh, Jesus Christ was I aching after doing it but it was fun and it yeah. was like it felt active and I was like lifting some heavy shit and now I'm like nothing else great <laughs> and then they I mean, announced that um, the gyms aren't going to be opening as early as they mutually, said they were going to yeah. open it's like Fuck, all right. Now what? Gonna... Oh, aren't they going to be opening? Oh, it's like around mid-July, isn't it? That's now, yeah, it's shifted a few weeks to mid-July. Well, yeah, hoping it's, it's mid-July. Um, they're just unsure because like, 
yeah. just actual humans like doing stuff. Yeah, which I completely get. The pubs, oddly enough, are opening. Uh, yeah, weird. <laughs> the pub near me has got like a bunch of adverts saying like you have to book a spot online. And I think yeah. they're, they're, everything's just going to be table service, so no one's queuing up. Which yeah, yeah. fair enough. They got a big garden. That's Should a good cool idea. Cook it. Yeah, it's sad. That's weird. But no, it's a weird home ec fucking week for me. Um, yeah, we kind of finished it. Yes, I was feeling a bit down, but I met up with some friends in the evening and social distance over the park, which was quite nice. Mm-hmm. Kind of got my spirits yeah. back up. That's good, man. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just like very much over this. I know a lot of people are over this and I know we need to go longer, but I am very much looking forward to... I, I, not full normality coming back because we're not going to get the for ages, but just to be able to kind of see people again properly. Mm-hmm. Would, I, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to it. Mm. When do yeah. you guys think that like full normality is going to arrive because i'm kind of yeah. hoping that by december things are back to a seldom kind of normal i think i mean obviously it, it won't be normal until there's a vaccine properly mm. normal but i feel like if the if the if the infection rate went down from four to three and maybe it'll go from three to two by i don't know september maybe hmm. i mean it, it would be nice to get like i i don't think places like Oxford Street are going to open and have like floods of people going like they opened yeah. some shops the other day people were queuing for That's like, ages outside yeah. which was mental like why are you queuing up to go into a Primark just order it online it's a Primark um, you can't order online on Primark I don't think can you not Primark well they need no. to sort that out Jesus yeah but that yeah. doesn't fit into Primark's we run a dirt cheap operation. That's, that's true. That actually have to pay yeah. people properly for doing that. Yeah. Um, Yo. Yeah, nice. we're calling that promo. Gali children. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'd like to obviously be open as soon as possible, but also safely and all that shit. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I don't see it. I, I don't... I think a sense of normality, like there will be things open, you can meet up, you can go to the cinema. I think we'll live with social distancing between maybe friend groups or like just general public for a long time. Um, yeah. But if you are able to meet up and kind of spend, like they said, now you can have a, another household over your household inside. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. But then they're but saying, then you, st- then you, you social have to distance the one inside. meter plus. Yeah, it's like, it's like guys, don't it's, face it, each it's other. so weird. Like, I either have people around or don't have people around. Like, if you're inside, lots of people probably don't have enough room to have have everyone one meter away from one another. It's just exactly. So it's like the the there's there's a lot of gray, isn't there? There's so Very much gray. gray. It's it's silly. Yeah, but, silly amount of but, gray. Yeah, I think it's just like use your common sense. I yeah. mean, if if yeah. you're having people over and they've been at risk or they are at risk, still don't have them over. If you're yeah. all, yeah. If you're all definitely okay and you've all been keeping to lockdown rules and stuff, it, you might be okay. It's, it, if you're if you're willing to risk it, risk it. Fine, but don't yeah, don't like, then go like, to the shops and get go hugging people. That that's too far. Yeah, it's like don't have your grandmother around yet. Yeah, simple things yeah. like that. Honestly, yeah. I can't wait for the time I actually get to hug someone properly again. I know someone other than like your parents, just like oh. Sully, you hug your parents. Yeah. Yeah, Sully. <laughs> the first no. <laughs> the first time we're allowed out and like we're going to bars, I'm gonna I'm gonna hug Sully so much. Oh, he's gonna no. hate me by the end of the night. I already do. I know. I'm gonna stroke. I'm gonna stroke his beard and hug him so okay, many I think times. Stroking the beard might be like a little bit too. Nah, far. I'm gonna stroke that beard. Like, that's actually on my face. Yeah, I'm stroking <laughs> the beard. Luca's just uh, committing to this. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I don't care. Like I don't care, Sully, how you feel. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> stick my tongue down your throat. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I'm gonna have four I'm pints. I'm gonna start platting his beard. That's what I'm gonna do. I, I, honestly, I might grow it out really long again. Perfect. So, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the Viking thing. You, you're gonna, you're gonna have. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna look great. Like, like, like last September, it was fucking. Yeah, really huge. it was mm. big. It so. was massive. I remember that. I might grow out. <laughs> Stop. Come on. <laughs> This is okay. A, this is a family show. It's not a family. But it's not a fucking family show. We, Sally, how are you? Pretty being? sure we swore in the first thirty seconds. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of an up and down week for me. Uh, mm. I mean, oh god, got my phone light on. Um, like the beginning of the week, I kind of don't remember. <laughs> it was just kind of work. It, I was, mm. but I think because it's so bloody hot this week as well. Oh, don't. Yeah. Oh my god. It was just like. Ugh. 
like I barely slept the first half of the week because it was too hot. Mm. Um, but then like on Thursday, I think it was just a massive high for me. Like I was, it was just a really good evening. Played like uh, Jackbox games with Luca and some of the people at work. Mm. Uh, I won every game I was in. At the moment you left, I started winning. Lol. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, last for everything Sally was there for. And the moment he leaves, bang, right at the top. <laughs> uh, and then obviously that evening as well, it was because uh, I, I left early, you guys, to watch the end of the Chelsea City game, which Chelsea won, which meant on points, Liverpool are Premier League champions for the first time in 30 years, um, hey. which is just sports. Just amazing. Like, I, the, as soon as it ended, I st- I, I obviously I put it on my Instagram. I just record myself just elated because it was like, like I don't play for Liverpool, obviously, mm. but like being a supporter in football terms, especially in England, it was like the the one thing every other team, big team had was oh, oh Liverpool is shit. They never won the Premier League. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like it was the one thing. Like I'd be like, oh look, we won the Champions League. Oh, you never won the Premier League, have you, mate? Uh, now, no, no one can say that. Um, <laughs> but um, it's and then like straight away, like I Facetime my cousins and we were just shouting and screaming because we were just so happy about it. So mm. it was like Thursday was just like this massive high. Mm. Um, but then, like obviously, the day after, I I, I was kind of like feeling a bit. Yeah, it was either I don't know. I it was like. It might have been just a come down from that big high of a day, uh, paired with just like, again the weather, and yeah, um, like like some stuff at work wasn't work was like broken. So I was just like, what, what what am I doing now? Mm. Um, and then like um, I guess the only other thing was with lockdown stuff. I I've kind of gotten into the zone where I I'm getting slowly better at like feeling more comfortable going outside and stuff mm. but i'm a very cautious person mm. uh also a little bit of a hypochondriac um <laughs> so it's so like so like randomly my mom was like okay cool i'm going Matalan now let's go and i'm like i don't know how comfortable like i feel about just going to Matalan. I don't feel like mentally prepared right now to go. Mm, yeah. I, I don't know. I think I was in just a weird mood. Um, like it's weird. Like I'm happy to go grocery shopping on my own. Cause it's like, I walk in, I know what I want. Or if I'm going shopping, I'll buy what I want straight away and leave. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're not browsing. Are you? But yeah. You to close shop, then, you're like, like moving stuff around and yeah. But then it's like, and also the Madeline was packed as well. I was like, yeah, I feel, I feel just kind of, off right now being here and so that kind of put me in like a bit of a shitty mood mm. and then when i'm when i'm in a bad mood it's just a cascade of all the bad things yeah. like i'm thinking yeah um i might try your thing george of like biting stuff down it feels like a much healthier way of uh handling my emotions <laughs> yeah oh, right. yeah man absolutely yeah. you have um, you have no idea how how useful it is hmm it's honestly, I, 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 I live by it. Gra- so you might uh, grab a, a Google Doc. I might give that a gander. So. Oh, a gander. Oh. oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, but the, um, the camera's for his only yeah. fans. Ooh, 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 that's ooh. The, so subscribe now to our only fans. Uh, no, Slap to our only fans. So we own, all we do is find racists and beat them up. <laughs> wow, <Jesus Christ. laughs> that would be a that would be a sick YouTube channel. Would it? probably a illi- recording Very yourself illegal. doing assault is illegal. Yeah, <laughs> very like... illegal. You were sent to like vigilante justice unless we get them to sign a waiver afterwards. <laughs> no one's gonna sign that. Not unless you threaten them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> someone's been thinking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I, yeah, it's just like. I'm I I just am a person that takes a little bit longer to like process these kind of things. Huh. So like, I'm glad stuff's opening up. I just I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious going about doing things. Yeah. Like I I'm looking for a flat 
which means, yeah, I'm going to have to end up commuting to London to look at the flats, obviously. Mm. Mm. Which, I don't know, I, I like, I'm always a tad more cautious about things. Which yeah. is sometimes a good thing and sometimes it's a bit, eh. Yeah. But no. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I, I get that. I'm, I, I don't think I'm probably as cautious as you are, but I'm more cautious than other people that I know on a kind of that weird middle ground. Yeah. I get and it. I think and, out of all three of us, I'm the least cautious. You're fucking... Yeah, jo- George like... just rushes into places, touches yeah, everyone's bro. face. Yeah. <laughs> If George, if them. we were in an army movie, George would be like the "Let's go, guys" kind yeah. of guy. Let's wash him headlong. He'd be a heavy. And Sally, and then, would, Sally would be the medic in the background. Just yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no, oh, no, guys, no. Oh. And then, like, and then, like, three quarters of the way through the film, you're like, "Where's George gone?" Mm-hmm. And then there's George just literally in like a, a destroyed house with his hand <laughs> in, with his head in his lap, and he's just bawling his eyes out because he can't <laughs> handle it. And it's like, oh, everybody wants me to be that guy that's, you know, leading everybody into battle. But it's just, it's not who I am at my core. I'm, I'm a scared child. So that, yeah, in the film, that's me. Then I give you like a lollipop and like we reconcile and like, you know, it's okay. It's okay to be both. Yeah. And then you grow even even more as a person. Yeah. And then we, we leave the house mm. and I get immediately shot in the head. Yeah. You get sniped. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh my God, no. No, no, he's just had a massive arc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and then the, the rest of us become what we wanted George to be, where we just run in after the sniper rifle, just throwing shit at them. Yeah, yes, mate, write this. Write if there's this. any writers listening that wants to wants to do that, go for it. We'll read it out. On, a war, on, who wants online. to make a war epic? Yeah. <laughs> Epic's a strong word. <laughs> 1917, more like 2020. <laughs> <laughs> And do you know what else took place in 2020? What? What? Rain the fire, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I was fully like, what did take place in 2020? I completely forgot up until that point. Wow. God damn you. But right. right? You. you know, you know, um, Corridor Crew, the guys yeah. on YouTube who yeah. do VFX artists artists react and stuff. They looked at yeah. it. They they did look at it. They looked at that yeah. film. And some of the effects in that film are amazing. Yeah, I was shocked at how Whoa. good it was. I kind of want to watch it now. I'm yeah, surprised they didn't make it. I'm surprised they didn't make that sequel they were going to make. How did it made money? Well, maybe oh, it didn't make enough that. money though. Yeah, true. Maybe because you know, it's the sort of thing like um, like Warcraft, the big CG Warcraft movie that they did that made money. Yeah. It didn't make enough money. It made like four hundred thousand, uh, four hundred million, but with the the budget and the marketing, it actually made yeah. like. Two million, and they're like, ah, "That's not enough." Yeah, it's, mm. that's that's the thing people don't realize that your marketing budget is basically the equivalent of your production movie budget, yeah. which is mental. Yeah. But yeah, that is mad. That's why, like, all the adventures and stuff. That yeah, it's a two hundred uh, million dollar movie. It's like, nope, it's a four hundred million dollar movie. Yeah, that's why wow. it's marketed so hard to get yeah. people watching it. That's crazy. I never really yep. considered that. Yeah. It's the same thing Never. in video games as well, I believe. Um, which is why <clears> when you hear like someone like Square Enix, which are like, "Cool, uh, Tomb Raider sold uh, two million copies. That's not enough for it." And they're like, "What do you mean, like, two million copies? That's loads." Like, no, because yeah. the actual budget and the marketing behind it, that's nowhere near yeah. enough to keep it going. Squeenix. Yeah. Squeenix. Squeenix. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sounds sounds like we've had a we've all had like an up down week, really. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I go back to my, my initial comment of this episode. I don't think this was a very funny episode again. Yeah, it was. I made a joke <laughs> about Squeenix. Um, <laughs> you found a dead body. I did. Yeah. I have a diary. George ran. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the, the highlights of the episode. Honestly, not, not a lot of funny stuff's happened this week. It's, it's been not- a lot of... Like, this week has been a lot of self-reflection. Yeah. And yeah. when it's like... When you're in the midst of a pandemic, plus all these other like personal social issues are happening as well, it's like yeah. it's uh, not a funny time to be it's, alive it's not at the moment. Fun, is it? Yeah. It's not fun. It's like uh, there's not many stories but, you can do where you're but, like, yeah, cool, could live a house. Yeah. If you want to round us out, is there anything you guys have done or watched or seen that you want to like or listen to? Okay, that you I've recommend got one. to people very quickly. Sure. Oh, yeah, I've got one. Go on, George. So yeah, this, yeah. this morning, well, yesterday, actually, I walked into yeah. 
uh, the village where I live in Birmingham, walked into the village, mm-hmm. went to Morrison's, picked up a couple of uh, ingredients, <coughs> and Ooh. I haven't cooked in a while. Mm-hmm. So what, what I was going to cook was uh, shakshuka. You know what a shakshuka is? No, I, I do not think I do. It's um, it. it's a tomato y based thing. It's like a breakfast thing. You kind of mm-hmm. have like you have like onions, garlic, and peppers. You can have like chilies yeah. and stuff in there as well if you want. Um, put the tomatoes in a in a big big pan kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Smush them all up, and then you crack a few eggs in there, and you just let it simmer yeah. for a while. And um, I made that, and it was okay. I feel like the, I need to do something to improve it. But that's what I made this morning. Ooh, and it was nice. good. Nice. And I also, as a music thing, mm-hmm. uh, yesterday, an artist called Rally Ritchie. I don't know if you guys have heard of Rally yeah. Ritchie. Um, he, Grey Worm from Game of Thrones. If you Indeed. Uh, oh. I love his yeah. first album. It's such a brilliant album. Yeah. He released a new album yesterday. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. And, I would um, download that right now. I listened to quite a lot of it. It's a very personal album. It's very good. Mm-hmm. And this morning while I was filling in my diary, mm-hmm. I was listening Ooh. to <laughs> listening to a band called Flight. I don't know if anyone's heard of Flight. No. Has anyone heard of a band called The, the Staves? Oh, I, th- I think so. I think it's, so. I think I've mentioned them on the podcast before. They're like three sisters who sing in pitch yes. perfect harmony. Yes. Flight Ooh. are like the male equivalent. <laughs> like, whoa, these guys are sick, man. Okay. And they've even they've all got a song together actually, which is a really good song. So I've so, had a good morning. So nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, nice. What, what about you guys? Uh I, I guess um from like a music side, uh Bring With Horizon just dropped a new song. It's not shit, which is interesting. Uh <laughs> so I, I know they're they're, they're previous song that they dropped was Ludens. That was pretty good. But they dropped this fucking instrumental album that was just mindless trip pop. And I fucking hated it. And I thought, oh, God, that's their new direction. Um, they dropped a new song, Parasite Eve. And it, there's a bike outside. That is very loud. That is a very loud. Sorry about the bike. Zoom. Hopefully I can take it out and post. If not, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, uh, new song, Parasite Eve. And it's, I mean, it's not great. There's a, there's a couple of moments in it. I'm like, ah, that just feels a bit shit but the tone <laughs> but the, the tone Sorry, of it the was, pause the pause yeah. where we laugh yeah the, the tone of it was actually really good and it's like i think they've come out saying that they're this year gonna drop they said three albums i imagine it's three eps that will turn into an album um and yeah. by the sounds of it they're going back to pre-ammo a bit more a bit heavier but yeah. not not like old school them heavy where it's just screamo shit. Uh, it's, it's not nice count your blend. blessings. Not the best album blessings. ever made. Jesus Christ! Uh, <laughs> hell no. Um, a bit more like I guess that's the spirit era, which is probably my favorite era of them. Looking back, um, yeah. So yeah, if we get more of that, that'd be cool. Uh, new song, which is great. Also, nothing but thieves dropped a new song and announced their new album. I love nothing but thieves. So got some cool new music coming this year, which is great. Um, cool. Something that. Shut up, motorcyclist. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's a lugger. That guy is, He's just, you know, kicking up. Dude. Are you sure a meatloaf's not outside? I know, right? Bat out of hell with hey. me. Jesus. <laughs> um, there, there was another a band that I kind of stumbled up. Fucking. Sorry, <laughs> oh He's off. He's, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Um, odd enough, I found a, a band through an Amazon suggestion for buying a vinyl because... Amazon wow. also do that. Um, they're called Bad Omens, and they they very much have a a periphery meets Bring Me the Horizon feel to them. And yo, uh, that's cool. They're actually pretty fucking good. Um, been listening to the, I think the album's called Finding God Before God Finds Me. Uh, is the album that I was listening to. It's got some proper bangers on it. Um, it's nice finding a new band because that ah oh, cool. Listen to this. They got a previous album which I'm gonna listen to. I know it's it's a nice to stumble across new music that just clicks immediately. And you're like, All yeah, right, this is cool. Honestly, that's like the best feeling yeah. ever, man. Yeah, um, I love so yeah, that. Like, music this week is it's been quite nice. I've had a few things that I'm listening to, a few things that I'm looking forward to. Something though that I am looking forward to on a on a film and TV front is f- it's a it's a show called Foundation. Um, little backstory to it. 
Uh, it's an Isaac Asimov series of novels, and they're um, bloody incredible. And Apple, iRobot. Yes, the guy that wrote iRobot. The book's fantastic. Oh, oh god, not the movie. <laughs> I love love the book. The movie has nothing to do with the book. Um, you think than, I like, care what you think? <laughs> I give a shit. You think I give a shit what you think? <laughs> <laughs> So Apple during their <laughs> WWDC uh, event, which is their like software event, they yeah. showed the trailer for this because they're making it for Apple TV Plus, and they are throwing Sick. all the money at it because Jesus Christ, does this look incredible? And it it needs it. It's a it's a massive kind of uh, space like science fiction kind of opus. Um, yeah. That sounds cool. I have a friend who would eat that up. Dude, I I'm that friend that's going to eat that shit up as well because I I love the book. I think. I think I actually got it. I, I had it before and then Sully gave me it and I didn't realize that it was the exact same copy. <laughs> nice. Um, nice. So I've nice. got two copies of it just sitting upstairs. Um, fantastic series of books. I, I love his writing. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it. Go out there and watch the trailer. It's just called Foundation. If you have an iPhone or Apple product, it's on, was it the Apple TV I, app? I need to use... I need to use my free Apple TV. Dude, I've never used it. Right, if you haven't used it, I think I spoke about it a few weeks ago. The... The TV show on Apple TV Plus, like the one TV show that I've kind of watched from it, like my mum, oh no, sorry, two of them. I watched Defending Jacob, which is so Chris Evans, the kid Damn. from the new It remake, and the woman wife from The Gentleman. I don't, all on, it's Chris Evans and two other people that are really good actors. Um, mm. It's super fucking dark, and the whole thing's about... Like, it's an investigation into whether their son killed someone, a boy that goes to his nice. school. Love it. And it's, it's super dark. It takes some turns. It's, it's a properly good show. Um, if, you, if you've bought an Apple product in the past, what was it, year? You probably have <coughs> yeah. a free subscription to Apple TV+. Plus. Definitely watch it. it I think it's, it's, it's fucking cool. But the other one, and for some reason I can't remember the name of it. One second. One moment. Oh my god! Oh, there we go. Mythic Quest: Ravens Banquet. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the the, the thing the... by the Always Sunny Philadelphia guys. Well, that's about a game studio. It's fucking hilarious, and it's easily the best thing on there. So, Sully, honestly, watch it. It's eight episodes, nine episodes. Cool. Um, you'll binge through the thing because I did it in like a day without realizing. Awesome. It, it was just cool. like perfect. Um, Got my tomorrow set. Also, they did an episode during quarantine. Um, that dropped a few weeks back, that's and cool. the whole really? thi- the whole thing is in a essentially in a video conference meeting, and it kind of cuts to <laughs> all different people, and it's it's a really really bloody brilliant piece of storytelling the way that they did it. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. It's and it ends super uplifting in kind of this world of that's quarantine. Uh, nice, yeah, fucking watch it, man. It's awesome. great. Cool. My big recommendation cool. for anyone out there. Awesome. Uh, very quickly, my recommendation is uh, if you're a history nerd slash buff like me, uh, check out Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Uh, he's like a journalist type guy who deep dives into historical events. Like they're they're all podcasts. Like they're each three to four hours long. Um, I mean, I one of the the big one, the one I'm really enjoying the most is called Supernova in the East. It's about uh, Japan in from like its transition from uh, like imperialist Edo Japan up until the end of World War Two. Mm. It's he's like on episode four just dropped in June, four hours each. Jeez, they like, are wow. Yo. They're very very informative. He go, he deep he 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 deep dives a lot, and he's like a military histo- uh journalist. So like. He gives his sort of like own opinion as well from a military perspective. Yeah. Um. I I think I finished that. So next week during work, I'm gonna listen to his World War One one, which is like seven episodes. Jesus, um, four hours each as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, anywhere between three to four hours it was a long, um, which is good. I mean, it killed my day working. Um, and I really like history. So if you're mm. into history, check that out. A lot of them. I mean, uh, some of the stuff is behind a paywall, but. There's so much stuff that isn't. Like I've not gone through all the free stuff yet. Yeah, I just wow, kind of googled so it, and nice. yeah, it looks like there's tons of free stuff on there. There's like and t- t- 15, 20 episodes that are free. And just from the art alone, I'm super interested yeah. in the one that's called Kings of Kings. Uh, about Persia. Yeah, that one's sick. It looks awesome. Yeah, I, I'm nice. definitely gonna give that a go. Nice. Yeah, that that's my recommendation. 
Yo. Um, and and I think on that note, I recommend we end the podcast. Yo! <laughs> Full circle. So, uh, you can find us anywhere. You can find good podcasts, including iTunes, Apple Music, and oh, sorry, God, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher Radio. You can also find us on RadioHaver.com at 6 p.m. every Tuesday, UK time, uh, and also on Slapduck.com. Mm. Uh, so, uh, we're now going to go um, measure Georgia's sword. Um, okay. <laughs> Whip out that we dick sword, that. boy. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> I, I want the sound of it just like hitting the mic, like, yeah, here it is. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. That's Jesus, gross. George.